Hey everyone, James with TFB TV. This is our last SHOT Show 2022 video, which I'm sure you're all pleased about since we turned out about 65 videos for SHOT Show this year. Since the first day of SHOT Show coverage, TFB TV and TFB TV Showtime have over 5.5 million views. So it sounds like for a show with a lower than usual turnout, missing some of the big names like Sig, Beretta, Ruger, Springfield, you bros at home still tuned in. And for that, Hop and I are thankful. My genetically engineered son, Hop, did a fantastic job for this being his first real show, by the way. His T-800 reporting style and his Zoomer skepticism bring great balance to our coverage, not to mention the fact that he's a cheap gun fancier. Works out perfectly. Never in my life did I think that I would ever have a Palmetto State Armory gun on one of my top five lists, or at least top five good gun lists, but after seven years of being on TFB TV, Nothing surprises me anymore. Hop went to PSA to check out the 57 Rock, and that is our number five handgun from SHOT Show 2022. Uh, the Rock will come first. It's, we're gonna say it's around 90 days out. It's a 5.7 platform. Um, really proud of this one. The trigger, to, in my opinion, is amazing for a striker fire gun. You've played with it. It's very clean, very crisp. Not like the dagger trigger where it's OEM, blown, clone type correct, but um, the trigger in this thing's amazing. Uh, we've done a great job with it. The production, this this is not the production frame, so you'll see a little bit more aggressive stippling when we get ready to go, you know, full board. Um, but again, very proud of that, that that pistol, ready for it to come to market. And capacity on the uh, Rock 5.7? 23 plus. Fantastic. So while it doesn't have Nicolas Cage or Sean Connery, PSA's Rock does have a decent trigger a whopping 23 round capacity of FN 5.7, and this is perhaps the cheapest possible way that you can get into 5.7 with an MSRP of just 499. Is the Rock itself a big deal? Mm, maybe, maybe not. It's gonna be a budget version of the Ruger 5.7, which is 900 bucks, which is a budget version of the $1,300 FN 5.7, but it's important because it's going to open the door for plebs to get into the heretofore patrician only 5.7 round. So you might say, James, why is that a big deal then? Well, I need to do a video about what I've learned over the years about the 5.7 round, but in short, it seems like FN got it right back in 1990 when NATO asked them to make a round. That was just as effective as 9mm with greater range, greater capacity, and the ability to defeat body armor. My research indicates that 5.7 accomplished all of those things, but we'll do a deep dive into a later video. Right now, just take my word for it and know that I have the 5.7 Rock on this video, more for the fact that it's kind of lowered the bar of entry, the cost of admission to get into 5.7, which will increase the reach and the popularity of this once boutique only round. I see a lot of potential with 5.7 moving forward, and I promise you I will not be surprised if we see at least one more 5.7 gun from a big manufacturer later this year. Number four, the good old controversy slot, which has pretty much been owned by kel this past year. And guess what? kel at it again. I got a sneak peek at the kel P15 pistol this past summer when I visited the kel factory. I got to see George Kelgren's personal P15 that he carries on a daily basis. So I was really excited to see this gun make it to SHOT Show this year. In a nutshell, the P15's basically a larger striker-fired version of the original kel P11. The P11 was truly the first micro-compact double stack, like a precursor to the SIG P365. Only an inch thick, I think like a 14 ounces or something, 11 round magazine, but the P11 was hamstrung by its god awful trigger. So it's like Keltec took the P11, stretched it out a little bit, made it striker fired, and made it run. Out, you know, nobody from the outside world has seen this thing yet. So when you yeah. came down and saw it, like I think you and I both saw it together for the first time. So that's kind of cool. Dude, that was a flex. That and was also, like. This is my first interview of the show. So. All right. Yeah, there it is. Dude. I know. There's we like love some it. chemistry and magic. Oh, for sure. No, no, it's we love each other. I mean, really, it's more of a lust, like a like a sweaty lust. P15 is new for 2022. We're actually going to release this uh, second quarter. Will be the polymer version of it. Uh, actually, they, I think they're going to actually release the steel version as well. So there's there's two different variants of this gun. So you got a polymer version. We've got a metal version as well. Um, a metal frame one feels really nice in the hand. Uh, it comes with those wood grips. Um, Downside of that, it doesn't have a pick rail on the bottom, uh, whereas the polymer version does. 
Uh, both have the same firing mechanism. It's a striker fire pistol, first time for us, which is kind of neat. Uh, holds 15 plus one, and they're saying that it's the smallest and lightest double stack nine millimeter on the planet. So. I wouldn't shock me because you guys really do push the envelope, just like you did with really this gun's predecessor, the P11. Yeah, this, I'm not even sure if they were even trying to do that. They just drew the gun up and made it, and it just happened to turn out to be the smallest one. Even though they're calling it the P-15, it's really more like the P-13 because it accepts the extended 12-round magazines from the original P-11, and those flush fit. The higher capacity mags actually extend out a little bit, as you can see from the video, but that doesn't take away from the allure of the P-15 as basically a super flat, super light, inexpensive Glock 19. That's two poverty tier manufacturers already on this top five list, but don't worry, gang, everything's okay. Nothing fancy isn't holding my family hostage, and we are done with cheap guns now. Now, we talk about imaginary guns. I'm reluctant to put it on this list because this is the second or third goddamn time I've seen someone threaten to produce the auto mag at SHOT Show, and it's just not gonna happen. The first time we saw this at SHOT was way back in 2018, four years ago, and to my knowledge, it didn't really get anywhere. The auto mag is like the Hope Diamond or the Steinbeckian Pearl, a tempting but cursed treasure that brings ruin to the person who possesses it. In 1970, the Automag Corporation started making the 44 Automag, an auto-loading pistol that shot a 44 caliber round. The company went bankrupt after just two years, making only 3,000 pistols. The pistols originally MSRP'd for 217 bucks in the 70s, but allegedly cost over $1,000 each to make. Look. I didn't go to Harvard Business School, but I'm just saying, if you want to turn a profit, there's this one simple trick called selling it for more than you paid for it. Anyways, here's a clip from Hop's interview with Automag, but I took the liberty of adding a soundtrack for you guys to set the mood. And we are checking out the Automag 44, which is finally almost ready, I guess. I'm hoping you can tell us a little bit about it. Actually, it took us six years because when we first purchased, we didn't realize it had some reliability issues and some even safety issues. So it took a, we made over 50 changes. We kept the look and feel of the gun, but now we've made it very reliable and extremely safe. And um, now we've also had to move a lot of production in-house because of the supply chain, a lack of reliability. And um, we made about 250 last year. We started in February. We had to stop two or three times. And right now we're six months behind on production, but um, it's been a huge hit. And so we're just glad to be here. Palmetto State Armory graciously offered us a spot on their range, and you know, I really appreciate it. I mean, man, it's a cool gun. It's cool, isn't it? But it shoots a proprietary round. It's expensive as hell to make. And if you watch the video with Hop and Luke shooting the gun, those little pussies looked like they needed to visit a chiropractor after they were done shooting it. Even so, I'm putting it on this list simply because I hope I'm wrong. I truly hope I'm wrong. I want this gun to succeed. I think it has potential. I really want it to work out. I'm just not sure that it will. Did I say I was proud of Hop? He straight up dominated the handgun interviews this year as one of our more popular videos was his interview with FN reintroducing the high power. This is not um, a replica or a remake of the old high power. It's uh, completely redesigned from the ground up. We've taken a lot of care to be respectful and pay homage to the old high power design. You can see obviously it looks like a high power, but it's a brand new gun. Uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about is not only does it how it look, but the capacity of the gun. It's a 17 round capacity in the magazine, uh, which is not something you get um, from the, the old high power at all. So uh, classic high power capacity was, I think, was 13 rounds, and then the more modern flush fit, like Metgar magazines would do 15, 15, but that was pretty much the way that it capped out yep. with a flush mag previously. Yep, absolutely. So we had to redesign the magazine, and then obviously just changing some of the dimensions and things like that uh, of the overall grip the size itself. So yeah, full 17 rounds in the grip frame. Uh, for the states that have compliance, uh, we have 10 round versions. One of the things that is, I guess, a nod to the old high power is the thumbprint on the slide. You know, that was a relic from a long time ago to be able to easily access the slide stop and remove it. Obviously, that's not needed with our, our, our pistol and the way our, ours is designed, but we wanted to kind of nod back to the old, the original design of the high power and include an Easter egg like that on there. 
Now, this is really interesting because, as you all certainly recall, Springfield Armory also introduced an improved high-power clone, the SA-35, only a few months ago. When I heard that FN, they were going to launch the high-power at SHOT Show 2022, I was like, that's it. Put a fork in it, SA-35, done, before it even begins. But they're two different guns. The SA-35 is like an enhanced high-power clone that has wide parts and accessory compatibility with the original classic high-power, while FN's newer high-power is something else. It's like the high-power 2.0. It's a modernized version that brought very little of the original high-power with it other than the outward appearance. While it looks like the OG, the newer high-power has an improved trigger, full ambidexterity, sight compatibility with a 509, a 17 plus one round capacity, and a Sig Sauer type short lockup instead of the original lugged barrel lockup. For that reason, I think that unlike Glock people and 1911 people, FN and Springfield High Powers should be able to coexist on this earth because they're really two different guns. I'm looking forward to trying out the FN version and I'll let you guys know what I think. Ah shit, here we go for number one and this is gonna make some of you guys ass mad so please forgive me. But this is a bit of a personal, this is what I, James J. Reeves, am excited about type pick. And before accusations start flying, I am not sponsored by Federal, although I think we used to be, nor am I sponsored by Smith & Wesson, although they're pretty good dudes. But I gotta say, I'm super stoked for the Super Carry. That is the Shield Plus in 30 Super Carry. The Shield Plus came out in March 15, 2021. It did everything the original Shield did, but better. It had a better trigger, it was lighter, but it also held 10 rounds in a flush fit mag instead of seven like the original shield. You guys watched that video over 600,000 times. The gun's been a hit. And then a few months later, Federal tells me about the new cartridge it's developing, the 30 Super Carry. The 30 Super Carry is a round that offers more power than 380 with energy matching like the lower end of the scale on nine mil but it offers more capacity than either 380 or 9mm, and that's the main takeaway from 30 Super Carry. Almost as powerful as 9mm, but with about a 20% greater capacity than 9mm. Federal also told me the Shield Plus was a perfect host gun for the 30 Super Carry, as they didn't have to change the dimensions or the weight of the pistol. All they did, change the caliber, squeeze in another two rounds of capacity. Well, the 30 Super Carry is a new personal defense round that we've developed. Um, really, it gives you the performance of a 9mm um, with the ability to have a couple of extra rounds in a magazine or carry a smaller framed uh, firearm. So it's really uh, in a smaller form factor, a 9mm performance, which then gives you that extra capacity. So it sounds pretty cool on paper, but with a chamber pressure of 50,000 PSI versus 35,000 PSI for 9mm, I was worried about the recoil that the 30 Super Carry was going to produce, so there I am, picture it, a clear Las Vegas day, technically Boulder City, walking up to the Federal Lane at SHOT Show Industry Day on the Range to try out the 30 Super for the first time. None other than Gun Jesus himself, Ian McCollum, materializes next to me and we become Eskimo Bros on the Shield Plus and 30 Super Carry for the first time together. Thanks for tuning in to another video on TFB TV. <laughs> Nine millimeter. Do you need a palate cleanser? <laughs> what do we think? I cannot tell any discernible difference in felt recoil. Between 9 and Between 30. Nine and 30. As Ian and I discovered, and Jeremy from The Truth About Guns, he was there too, there was no perceptible difference between 30 Super Carry and 9mm recoil. If Federal can deliver 30 Super Carry, and at a price that matches 380 as they promised, this round could go places, especially if other manufacturers get on board. Also, I'd really love to see the new Smith & Wesson CSX. I've got one right here in 30 Super Carry as I'm warming up to this pistol. And I've heard that Smith & Wesson should be able to get 15 rounds of 30 Super Carry into this new platform. Guys, that is it for SHOT Show coverage. Our last floor video ran today. It's me and Hop checking out Taurus on the SHOT Show floor. Great video. We got to collab on it. Really enjoyed making it. Probably my favorite video SHOT Show. So make sure you go over to TFB TV Showtime and subscribe and check out our other content. Guys, 
Alex Caps and I started TFB TV on January 20, 2015, which means we just celebrated seven years on YouTube. After Vegas, my body is broken. I lost my voice. Half the team got COVID, swear to God, but we put our bodies on the line for you, TFB TV viewers. Thank you for the past seven years. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and we will see you at SHOT Show 2023.